technique with you that is so simple, you're kind of going to wonder why I'm even sharing it, but maybe it'll inspire some of you. So I've got a pretty simple black and white line art here. This is on um, my Strathmore uh, visual journal with the Bristol paper. And right now we're going to go ahead and activate the orange pigment because we're going to fill in just the block around her and then once the paint dries we're going to go ahead and add um, details in with more black ink. Now you could have you can add lots of detail at any point that you wish. I was just busy all weekend and I lost track of time and um, in order for this to work you need to allow your your ink to cure fully or you can add it afterwards. And I personally don't like using plate bristle for lots of watercolors, but this is just a light watercolor wash, so it really shouldn't affect the paper too, too much. You can even take a bulldog clip and clip it down. And that should prevent the water from warping the paper. So we've got the paint fairly reconstituted, pretty mixed. I probably added a lot too much water. We're going to go ahead and start applying a wash. And it already looks like it probably won't be as dark as I want, so I may have to do another layer. And you want to use the largest brush you can comfortably maneuver. And what that means is um, if you're using too small a brush, it's really easy to get inside all those nooks and crannies and not um, not get your paint where you don't want it, but it's going to dry before you finish applying it, so you're going to get all this streaking. And you don't want to use a huge brush because it's going to get away from you. And learning which brush is the brush you can most comfortably handle um, is the largest brush you can most comfortably handle. That takes time and practice and experience. As you get better, you will be able to maneuver larger and larger brushes in tighter and tighter spaces. This isn't a particularly high quality brush. The tip isn't that great. It's a squirrel hair brush, but it sort of just wants to splay out everywhere despite repeated conditioning. So um, if you're using poor quality brushes, you are gonna have to use smaller brushes in order to get those details. Ideally, you want the watercolor to dry all kind of a matte shade. And you can also use opaque watercolors if you feel more comfortable using those. So I'm going to allow this to dry and then go over it again because it looks a little bit muddy for my taste. And the camera is making it look a little more saturated than it actually is. So with papers like this Bristol Vellum, they don't absorb your pigments the way watercolor papers might. And um, they also can leave like a splotchier effect. I've never really cared for doing watercolor on Bristol. Um, so me d demonstrating this technique on this paper is not um, like a, a recommendation. I just knew that it would be able to take the, the water. So I'm doing my second layer and I have to be uh, careful because I did overload the brush a bit. And if you have wet areas, and I do have a wet area up there, you may have a hard time getting a more even coat. That's what I'm really trying for here is I didn't like how splotchy my first uh, layer was. So I am doing another layer to see if I can't get some more even coverage and a little more opacity, more opacity, more opacity, more opacity, more opacity, more opacity, more opacity. All right, now we need to let this dry and see how it looks. All right, so my paint has finally dried and while I was waiting for my paint to dry, I did some examples of the sort of marks I'm going to be making using these Pigma um, FB, MB, and BB markers. And I've talked about these in um, a Sketchbox video, actually. Um, and I really like them, so I will be using them. 
And the thing about, let me pull in real close. The thing about inking with um, like heavy spot blacks or inking for black and white reproduction is it's really often about just like careful repetitive strokes, keeping track of what you're doing and um, trying to replicate textures without losing all your detail. And if you find that you're starting to lose detail, you can actually go back and add it in with a white gel pen, like a Sakura Jelly Roll or a Signo, or um, Copic's um, Opaque White is a good option as well. Now for these acorn caps, I'm pretty much just doing a very open sort of squiggly line using the um, MB brush. My intention isn't to block in the entire shape, it's just to add some contrast to all this open line work that I currently have. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in these acorn caps. And since, since I've lost some of the detail, I'm going to go ahead and use my white Signo to try and add some of that white detail back again. Um, trying to keep it mostly to where highlights would be since that would make the most sense to the eye. And usually you wouldn't want to apply Signo until the very end of your project because you can't apply color on top of it. Um, but I don't have any intention of applying color on top of this, so this should be just fine. Next, I wanted to create sort of a beaten up leather pattern like this on the test um, using the FB pin on her boots. And it's pretty much just a little cross hatch pattern that never fully crosses. It just sort of like, uh, it's hard to explain, but it's never perpendicular. It's always at an angle. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the boots with this. Believe me, if you don't, other artists will cut you down. I'm sorry, but is a full artist a separate thing than just an artist? Like, he's just an artist, right? No, in watercolors, there are people who specialize in just uh, florals, and they tend to be pretty def they tend to be pretty defensive about it. If it sucked. If it wasn't you would like. Tell them that unprovoked? No. But I'm not that. There are people who give me all sorts of shitty comments. So believe me, I, I know how shitty the internet is. I understand how it can drive you to like make um, qualifications and. And like it's sad, we should all be treating each other with more respect than that, but we're not.
went ahead and blacked in her pocket because I needed the ink to have plenty of time to dry because Signo doesn't write very well on still wet ink. And I'm going to do a little flower pattern in reverse using the white Signo. And if you mess up or your petals aren't particularly neat, you can always go back and cover over it again. And you can also use um, white, uh, Copic Opaque White, if you don't have a Signo or you want to do a larger design. And on the heels of her boots, I went ahead and added some white back in, and now I'm just knocking it down a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in this flower pattern. When you're doing a repeating pattern, sort of like this flower, make sure you um, take it off into the edges too, because if you were drawing actual fabric with a pattern, it wouldn't all just be concentrated in the middle. There would be pieces on the side that didn't quite make it into the cut. And that's also a good way to avoid having to draw a bunch of something. You can draw a hint of it, and as long as you reference it in the rest of the, um, the space, people will understand what the pattern is supposed to look like. Why? Can be a tip on your outside. Really, oh, okay. isn't that important uh, that you have to really keep in mind? But wind is. If you've got yeah. a lot of wind coming in, that'll hit that pot and take away the heat, and so it can be very difficult. So we're going to allow the white Signo on her pocket to dry, and I'm going to go ahead and do her hair with the BB and the MB, the two largest brushes. And this is a lot like doing highlights um, on her hair in Copic marker or in watercolor, especially given how flexible the Pigma BB is. And if you haven't tried one of these yet, and you're interested in inking um, for comics or for illustration, I highly recommend you give it a try. It is Copic proof and waterproof, and um, it's very easy to use and they're not that expensive either. I think you can get the set of three for under $10. So I'm gonna go ahead and start working on her hair. And because the, br the bow she's wearing is going to cast a shadow. I want some areas to be more reflective, more shiny than others. And you do these sort of highlights just by letting the brush do most of the work. Um, you want to encourage the sort of natural flicking motion that makes the um, the Sakura of America BB so nice. And the BB stands for big brush. Me the MB stands for medium brush, etc. Now see, I went a little overboard. Sometimes it can get away from me, especially with little illustrations like this. So what you want to do is you want to wait until the ink is fully dry and then go over it again with your white signal. There are lots of ways you can knock out the highlights on hair. I like to do it as I'm inking, but some people like to add them afterwards.
Okay, so that area where I messed up is dry, so now it's time to use the white Signo pen to go ahead and go over it. And when you scan this, it shouldn't be all that noticeable. It's a little more difficult to color correct um, something that has a spot color on it because usually with black and white, you can bump the contrast all the way up to drop any sort of gray shadowy lines you might have. But we can't do that because we'll lose that orange. And then when our hair dries, I can go back and add, um, if I want to, I can add more highlights or I can um, sort of fix areas that might have gotten overworked. So I want to draw her freckles now. So I'm switching over to the FB. I want to remove any sort of eraser smooch. And just like when we're painting freckles, how we don't um, do like perfect circles, I like to do um, sort of oblong shapes. At least that's the shape my freckles are. So that's the shape I like to draw freckles in. And I'll zoom in for you guys because that can be harder to see. The majority of her freckles are on her cheeks and on her neck and the top part of her arms. And I'm going to add some more streaks on the acorn she's carrying to sort of darken them up a little bit, add a, like a, a mid-tone sort of effect. Um, that's what tends to happen when you add a, like a pattern or a texture to something is it tends to give it a mid-tone. So this reads as the, her, oh, I'm pulled in. Her boots read as gray. The, the acorns are going to read as gray from a distance. And for those of you who read manga, that's why halftone is used. It's to help add contrast to a piece. At least that's, that's the intention, is to build, um, to help build up layers of contrast. Sometimes it's very difficult to do things in just black and white. I'm tightening up those hearts and flowers that I did earlier because the signo's dried now. It takes a couple of minutes. You can really turn it into a muddy mess if you try to go in too early and fix things. So it takes a degree of patience and, and trust in yourself that you're going to go back and fix things. Although, if it doesn't bother you, at the end, maybe it wasn't such a problem after all. Alright, so I want to add a little heart pattern that sort of matches her pocket on her hair bow and her dress. But I need to tighten up some details on the hair bow. And I'm drawing these little hearts going to the opposite sides. Let's just assume somebody sewed two separate pieces of fabric facing each other in the middle so that 
this would work out so well because actually if you were to take a piece of fabric that had like a, a repeated pattern going in one direction let's say the hearts for example so these would be going in the same direction as those quite probably actually I think definitely now the knot is where it would get kind of complicated And just because something is complicated or confusing to draw it doesn't mean you shouldn't draw it. It means you should draw a lot of it. You should draw the heck out of it until you understand how it works. But for the purposes of cuteness in this particular illustration, I will draw the hearts the way I want to draw them. Actually, I'm going to switch now to the MB because that's going to be easier to handle with these larger hearts on her dress. Or, if you're having difficulty, you can outline them with the smaller brush and then go ahead and fill them with the larger one. It's really about building up your comfort level and what you think you can do and what risks you're willing to take. So if you're not ready, to freehand the hearts. It's totally okay to draw them with a pencil first. Just like it's also okay to correct the heck out of them if you have to. Now, the last thing I usually like to do, and this is going to be hard on this one, is I usually like to put some shadow underneath my inks to sort of ground the character on the picture plane. pretty much oh let me pull out for you guys that's pretty much it it's pretty simple but the end result is fairly striking it's a fun way to use a little bit of simple watercolor with your black and white illustration or even your black and white stamps I suppose um, and it really makes them pop and they definitely seem more graphic um, after you've put the color behind and after you've added in all the details. So I hope I inspired you guys. I hope um, we learned something together today. Um, and I hope you go out and you try something new. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. And I will see you later on with more reviews and tutorials. I'm Becca Hilburn from Natto Stoop's, Natto Stoop, Natto Stoop Studio. Bye guys.